Thank you for joining us. My name is Aaron Cohen. Um, during our previous webinars, we had uh, uh, we had received a great amount of interest regarding covering a topic regarding management of headaches. Many of our patients who suffer from subarachnoid hemorrhage and undergo treatment um, may suffer from long-standing headaches. Dr. Noah Rosen from Cushing Neuroscience Institute has graciously agreed uh, to give a talk regarding this very important topic. He's the director of the Headache Center there, and uh, despite Sandy and all the troubles in the East Coast, he has been really very kind to make sure we can proceed uh, with this presentation. Noah, thanks again, and uh, please take it away. Uh, we will review the questions at the end of the presentation, and therefore I appreciate you saving those questions till the end. Thanks, Noah. Please go ahead. All right. Well, thank you all for inviting me to, to come and speak on a subject that's near and dear to me. Um, the uh, So bear with me. This is my first webinar. If I don't make eye contact to the camera, may I hope you forgive me. Um, so we're going to talk today about uh, neurovascular headaches and a range of different headache disorders. So um, I always like to plug, if you only remember one thing from this, and that's the American Headache Society. They have a website which uh, also has a uh, patient-oriented uh, site. Uh, so uh, that can be found through the American Headache Society .org. And if there's interest, uh, there's uh, uh, much more work that could be done and many doctors that uh, contribute to, uh, to that site as well. So um, just a little bit of background about headaches in general. So the uh, International Headache Society uh, really breaks headaches into two subtypes, that is, uh, secondary headaches, that is, where the headache is a symptom of another condition, and primary headache, where the headache itself is the condition. Uh, for example, migraine, tension-type headache, uh, cluster headache, and so forth. And we'll cover a little bit about those primary headaches as well. So the international headache classification actually was originally done in the mid-80s uh, under Jan Olesen from Denmark and was revised in 2003 also under Jan Olesen. They're in the process of uh, creating the next edition as well. So this is a uh, document in work um, and uh, probably always will be as we attempt to classify and understand the pathophysiology a little bit better. So if you can make out the slide a little bit, this is some of, one of the distinctions we make between primary headaches and secondary headaches is really uh, whether or not the external stimulus uh, is the disease state or the trigger for the disease state. So as you can see, uh, under primary headache, there are uh, certain triggers, whether they be uh, menstrual cycle, stress, certain foods, uh, change in sleep, which acts upon a genetic predisposition uh, leading to the pathophysiology of spreading excitation and depression that moves through the brain and decreased serotonergic activity that really represents the aura that we see. Now, when that spread causes uh, or uh, goes across the brain, it uh, acts upon a dysfunction of the brainstem serotonergic and noradrenergic pain pathways, what sometimes termed the trigeminovascular system, and that leads to headache. So very similar with secondary headaches, uh, that is headaches caused, for example, by increased intracranial pressure cerebral ischemia that we see in stroke, vascular malformations, meningitis or uh, uh, infections of the covering of the brain or encephalitis uh, or autoimmune conditions such as giant cell arteritis. This also can lead to spreading cortical depression, but also we see stimulation of primary sensory neuronociception that is certain cranial nerves which pass on that information and then ultimately again act through the uh, trigeminovascular system leading to pain. 
So when the diagnosis is made, the first thing, of course, is to obtain a good 